It's the first day, first morning, so the compressor's not on yet. No one has made a cut yet. Everybody's stone is a beautiful, perfect rectangle. We're just getting them all started, setting them up with the marks that they need to start. I think everybody has a, a model or a sketch. We've got somebody who's never cut stone before with a big old piece. You don't need to cut this. Just okay. zzz, 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 bink, 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 yeah. zzz, zzz, bink, bink, bink. Don't hold it up here. Hold it right there. Everybody's digging in, our newbies are picking it up and running with it, and everybody's happy. The Indiana Limestone Symposium has taken place at the Bybee Stone Company in Ellettsville, Indiana for over 20 years. Bybee Stone Company is located in the area called the Stone Belt. It is here where a unique rock formation that geologists call Salem Limestone is found. In the stone industry, it's known as Indiana Limestone. The Indiana Limestone Symposium exemplifies the traditional craftsmanship and art that is indigenous to the limestone-rich hills of south-central Indiana. What marble is to Carrara, Italy, this limestone is to Bloomington, Indiana, and, and Bedford, and Ellettsville, and Steinsville, you know. It's such a narrow band of, of this really top-quality limestone, as I understand it. It's, it's the best limestone for both building and sculpture that you can, as good as anything you can find anywhere in the world. Frank Young was the director of the Bloomington Area Arts Council in 1996 when Amy Breyer approached him with the idea of starting a yearly limestone sculpture symposium to teach and share the tradition of carving limestone. I like the idea of possibility. I don't like to say that you can't be done because we've never done it before. And it's a wonderful idea. Other places around the country had done it before and done it very successfully and had a lot of fun doing it. And um, it just seemed like the right thing for this community where we have a huge number of artists present, working in art and a lot of sculptures, and we have the resource immediately under our feet. Uh, the, the finest carbon stone in the world right here. It's just the perfect place to put it all together. Of course, it has far exceeded my expectations. You know, we had the hope that people would come out and learn to carve. We get a few people locally coming. We never had any idea that people would come from all over the United States and all over the world to be here to learn to carve Indian limestone. It's such a part of our local culture. I mean, it's limestone is everywhere in southern Indiana, and it's because it's right here, and it's people like Will Bybee and, and his brothers and the, and the mill that, that make all that possible. The historic stone mill at Bybee Stone Company has been producing cut stone since 1864, when it was opened as Matthews Mill. Bybee Stone, uh, Will Bybee is kind of our angel. This this site is his property, is the stone, the mill's property, and he's basically let us have it for 20 years. Uh, we uh, we draw on his knowledge and expertise. His workers will occasionally come over and help move stones for us. Uh, he'll even put out gravel for us when it's when it's swampy, and then you have people like uh, like Ned in the carving room who can do the Corinthian columns and palm trees and statues of people. Ned Cunningham, master carver at Bybee Stone Company, has been involved in the limestone symposium since its beginning. He's always on a steady course. Talk to Mr. Ned. Amy Breyer and Frank Young started came up with the idea and he laid the groundwork and did all the all the planning for the first symposium. They, they Bybee suggested that I, or Amy asked, whatever, that I show people how to use the power tools. Most people that were trying it hadn't used power tools before. So, uh, and so that was kind of my role in the beginning was teach people how to remove a lot of stone quickly, which is hard when you first start. People come because stone carving can be kind of an isolated experience, you know, you're, you're, unless you happen to have a studio with other people, 
you're working pretty much on your own. So everybody looks forward to, to coming out here and sharing tips and ideas and gripes and you know everybody everybody wants to <laughs> whine about how hard it is to move stone when they're by themselves and yeah. you know yeah. yeah when you don't have a forklift so um, and everybody likes to talk about what tools they like so and, it's and great to have other people to just bond with that do the same things you do well first of all it's always great to be back with the old friends the people that return and the people that are new become new friends immediately so that's the, that's one the big part of it, uh, and you know, the common interest keeps people just pulls people together. It's just a great thing. I guess I came because I wanted to learn stone carving, and uh, I enjoyed it, so I kept coming back. Uh, it's a nice community; they're all willing to share what they know, and uh, we have a good time together. I heard about it uh, about 10 years ago and came down to just to observe and see what people were doing and then I said to myself, I've got to go to this next year. I had worked in clay and casting and plaster and things uh -huh. like that, so it's a different process of taking away rather than building up with clay, so I had to kind of retrain my brain to work differently. Now I think I think more like a carver. But for me, it's like I like to be around other sculptors, and that's not an easy thing. <laughs> it's not easy to find other sculptors. Yeah. So I like to come to spend the week with other people that are doing what I like to do. And that's the most important part for me. I mean, I've learned a lot. I've, I've, I think I've progressed enough. I could work on my own mm -hmm. at home, but I, I like to be here in this environment. I think this is my 13th, maybe 14th yeah. year. I live here, so it's very convenient for me to just keep coming back year after year. And I just, from the very first year, I got totally hooked. I, I think it's more fun than a grown-up should be allowed to have. <laughs> so, so this is my summer camp every year. Yeah, I get to come out and make dust and make art and you know just have a great time. And the people are wonderful. Everybody yeah. helps each other. I'm going to be practicing carving faces because uh -huh. that's that's my nemesis. I'm. I have a terrible fear of screwing up a, a face, so I just want to practice. So I've got this four foot length of stone and I'm splitting it into four cubes and on each corner I'm going to carve a face. You can hear the stone, it'll sing to you a little bit. The pitch changes a little bit as it gets tighter. Oh, there it goes. Good job! So that's the idea. <laughs> I've done the figure workshop for quite a while. Uh -huh. And one of the reasons I'm doing this this year is that I have a lot of figures in various stages of completion, but almost none of them has anything remotely resembling a face carved in it yet. This will be my fourth year, uh -huh. but it's my first year with power tools. So I've done hand carving. Uh -huh for three years and it's more like the Zen. I always was kind of intimidated by the noise, you know, and the power tools. I'm gonna get rid of a lot of stone, which I don't need on there. Uh -huh. And it's it's gonna be more like an old the old hitching post with the horse head on top uh -huh. and it's gonna turn into a tree trunk. So I have to grind that and then knock these chisels off to round this more into a tree trunk shape. Well, I've been working in stone for about three or four years and I, I'm loving it. And I've never worked with compressed air like this, so I'm, I want to see what that's like. My intention is to make a um, a candelabra. That's that's the intention. So far, so good. I know the design is in there someplace. I just have to keep trying to find it. Two years ago, when we first moved here, uh, we had visitors in town, and we were looking for something to do. And visitbloomington.com has a crazy good events calendar, and so I saw that there was an open house for this event on that calendar and we took our friends and we came around and looked at everything and I thought that was really cool. And this is the first summer I've been able to actually take some time and come out and do this. It's a W, okay. so it's, uh, it's going to stand up like this. So it's for our future house. So I'm getting married next year and so W will be my last initial. So it'll stand in our, in our house and have, have everything so I love limestone you know being in architecture it's like one of the best building materials in the world and 
here in this area we have the best building materials in the world through limestone it's like the best so. and little by little i've learned different techniques and it's all hand carving no pneumatic so it's chink 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 mm -hmm. and it's fun it feels great everybody's doing different things so you walk around and look and see what everybody's doing i mean it's really all over the map a, young, a youngster that just carved two letters and this morning Me and my dad came here to get some stone, and then we saw this, and then um, we wanted to um, do it. Okay. So we um, signed up online and uh, did this. I saw the article in Blue Magazine, and we were picking up stone. We saw the tents, and we stopped over, and we spent about a half hour walking around, and he got really intrigued. And so we, we came back this morning. My dad told me to bring something to trace and carve out from the stone. So I brought this G, and then I carved two of them. Um, one backwards, one just a little G. And then um, I had to dig out all the stone. But when I did it, it made a pattern. So I um, did that. So. And I kept it like that. I don't want to make any more designs because that's how I liked it. And he carved those two things, and I'm carving a Celtic uh, cross uh -huh. um, over here. The experience has been wonderful. The teachers have been fantastic. I wasn't expecting to get that much done, but I was so impressed uh, with not only what how far I was able to get in the morning, but also how how much my son was able to get done. Well, the teachers are incredible. Yeah. I mean, they really take you where you're at and help you. So you don't have to be an artist to come here. You just have to be a willing carver. They're very giving. They're very, you know, they everybody has different ways to instruct. And you'll find, you know, different advice. But they're good. They're good at helping you start. If you don't know anything, they can help you go there. If you're more advanced, they can shift to help you go farther. I mean, it's a great opportunity. Everybody seems willing to share and help and uh, sometimes just... Uh, a few words can save you hours, you know, just by somebody you know, telling you something that you didn't realize. One of the things that makes it nice is there's a very broad range of ability, all the way from people who've never held a chisel or a hammer on up to people who are professional sculptors. And so, you know, there's every, every level of ability and people are very generous with their advice and also with their tools and everything. So it's, it's a nice little community, really. Sharon Fullingham has been a regular participant in the Indiana Limestone Symposium ever since she first traveled from New Mexico to come to the symposium in 2000. She's now an instructor at the symposium. When I came here, I didn't know a blooming thing about stone. I just knew that this is what I wanted to do. So I was handed chisel and a mallet and a, and a piece of stone and and I walked away after that week a changed person. When you come to Indiana, you get this beautiful, homogenous, uniform butter to cut and carve and create into these myriad things. And it's, it's just wonderful. And, you know, did, I... Did I, you call it butter? Yeah, it, it, it's like cutting butter. You can carve any direction you want with it and create something without having to worry about some bedding plane sloughing off or some grain catching your chisel and breaking it or I'm holding it right. yes you are okay. uh, excellent janice is making a textured surface she's practicing on this larger piece of stone because it's not moving to refine a form uh, to use on this small piece that she's built over this week and uh, you know she's learning control of her tooth chisel by uh, pivoting one side and and creating this beautiful shell pattern that's what she, that's what she's doing right now before last year I kept reading about it in the paper but after the fact you know I would read about this cool limestone carving and I've always wanted to do it so last year I thought of it ahead of time and, and signed up for a whole week and got hooked and my husband built me one of these bankers um, so I have my own setup at home and I bought tools and it's very addicting so this year I came back for another week I just took a um, 
a quilt block uh -huh. pattern that I found in a book of mine and then I just drew it on there yesterday and now I'm digging out the different pieces different fabric pieces in a way you're gonna do a nine patch I might I might <laughs> I kind of have a vision of having three of them uh -huh. you know in different blocks in each one I thought of a nine patch for one but I'm gonna put swirls swirls on every other one of those strips to kind of make it look like a swirly pattern. Uh -huh. It's just fun. And you draw whatever you want to draw. You can be geometric, you can be artsy, you can be, you know, faces, and the teachers definitely guide us. Mm -hmm. Some of us do it a day at a time and some a week, and it's, it's pretty cool. You lose your mind in it. So whatever you come in with, your thoughts and worries, it gets it goes away it's great release <laughs> you know you can just hit it as hard as you want and it you know and you see this plain block that becomes your own art so it's it's pretty fabulous to me I mean I know when I'm doing art is when I'm lost in it Mm -hmm. I have no idea. So I think it's a meditative practice. It's people. Some people love it for that. But that's what it does to me. Time yeah. disappears, you know, when I'm when yeah. I'm carving. Uh -huh. So Ned, when did you first start working with stone? Uh, I'd say 1979. I was modeling at Rhode Island School of Design, and I made, was doing a clay bust of my girlfriend, and um, one of the faculty there, Arnold Prince, said, you have a good sense of form, you should come take my stone carving course. I said, well, I'm, I'm staff, I'm not a student, because uh -huh. RISD is pretty expensive. He said, no, no, come, you don't have to pay, just come to my class. So, so I did, and he, he gave me a old piece of a limestone cornice from a building that had been demolished, and a uh, hammer and a chip point, and he said, just use this point for the first year. I said, the first year, and then I... <laughs> I, hit, I, hit it, I hit the chisel in the stone and all the lights went on and I knew that's what I wanted to do and he said go back to IU and finish a fine arts degree and I had a few years in out here uh -huh. and uh, so I did my family knew the Bybee family my mm -hmm. father was a draftsman here at Woolery ran the drafting room at Woolery and uh -huh. the other mills a lot of my family's in stone and I just never thought I would do it yeah yeah <laughs> But I came here, and this, they've been a great people to work for. And, and if you can do architectural stone, there's more opportunities here than any place in the world. Yeah. At the Limestone Symposium, there are well-known artists from around the world whose credentials include years of carving public art and private commissions. Walter S. Arnold is a world-renowned sculptor and carver from the Chicago area. I got interested, first started trying to learn to carve when I was 12, and spent my teenage years trying to figure out on my own and realized pretty soon I was trying to reinvent the wheel. I needed to find people who actually knew how to do it. Tried to get on at the National Cathedral when I was 17, but that didn't work at that time. So when I was 20, I tracked down where in Italy there were still carvers, and I went over there and found a shop where I was able to talk my way in and start working alongside them and learning. And the shop I was in initially, it was basically two guys, brothers-in-law, who had both started carving when they, as apprentices to their uncles or grandfathers when they were about 9 or 11 years old. So between the two of them, they had about 110 years' experience. And worked with them for a year, and then worked with other carvers. And then I came back and was able to get in at the National Cathedral where I worked under fifth generation Italian master carver and also with Patrick Plunkett who'd worked on Wells and Chichester in England. Mm -hmm. Using a face, I did the clay model and then this is a resin cast for the model, so I'm pointing from that okay. to the stone. Pointing is an old traditional method of measuring very precisely, sort of a 3D pantograph to measure points from the model, set them exactly on the stone and then carve between the points to get it exact. So from this point to this point to that point, I've got a triangle. From here to here to here, I have a triangle. So I'm basically creating polygons on the surface 
and by starting with bigger ones and working to smaller ones, just like in a you know 3D scan model, only we were doing it a couple thousand years before the computer graphics people started doing it. You know, traditionally, sculptors would do the clay model, a mold maker would make the plaster cast, and then various carvers would take it and reproduce it in stone. And that way, for example, a sculptor like Rodin or Canova could focus on making the design and the model and could make dozens of models. Mm -hmm. And then there'd be dozens of carvers who'd take those models and execute them in stone, where, say, if Rodin also were doing the marble, in one year he might do one piece instead of being able to do eight or ten pieces. Right, right. John Fisher has been traveling from Fort Bragg, California, every year to the symposium since 2014 to teach figure carving at the symposium. It's just been a wonderful time. Uh, it's really been a pleasure working with Amy and Sharon and meeting all the wonderful people here. I think the experience of watching these things being birthed out of a block of stone is worth the mission price. Well, this year we got a quarry block, an old one that was sitting around and started uh, taking off material and somewhere along the line it turned, started turning into a theme about the quarries and the quarrymen, so it seemed appropriate and that's what we carved. There's a man here on top who's lowering a chain down to this guy who's going to hook it to the dog that will pick up a block. Here's the other dog and this guy is holding the dog up as well and reaching for uh, a, de a D clamp to secure the chain to the dog. Uh -huh. So they're all working together. It's a cooperative effort, and Amy and Sharon and I have all been carving on this in the spirit of that cooperation. And last year I did uh, the sculpture called Puppy Love that's here in Ellettsville and uh, on the Heritage Trail. I'm interested in passing on the, the knowledge and the, about stone carving and, and that it's an ongoing thing, there's a legacy, and that's kind of what this sculpture is about too, it's, it's that heritage and that legacy. I've learned a lot out here. And it's just been great working with these people and having the master carvers come and share their ideas, their perspectives, and show us how to do things. You know, I've learned to do things I never thought I'd know how to do. I hope everybody who is has one inkling bit of interest or curiosity, they should come out to Ellettsville, come to this site, and Can check I this add out. Sure, sure. That there seems to be a a misperception in the community that this is for professionals or mm -hmm. and we want we just desperately want to dispel that we are open and friendly and we attract a wonderful group of people open to any interested amateur or professional the indiana limestone symposium is held in week-long sessions every year in june at the bybee stone company Carving instruction is offered to amateur through professional carvers in a variety of styles and techniques using both hand and pneumatic tools. It's in there. I just gotta free it. important to keep the art of sculpture going, keep it alive, especially this area with carving limestone. Come give it a try and um, embrace that Hoosier heritage. It's so cool how they make all this stuff with just a hammer and a chisel.